your day out with me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hey, everybody. It's the program. Welcome to it. We're on TV. Once again, once again, every day, turn on the machines. And we start talking for, for an, an hour. hour. Yeah. For an hour. For an hour. Here we are again on the couch. One full hour. What day is it? It appears to be not Tuesday, not Wednesday, not Thursday, not, not Friday, Sunday, not Saturday, not Sunday. It's that. It's one. It's the other one. Yeah. That, that, one. that other one. That's the day. That's the seventh one. Yeah. Look who's back. There he is. It's the man of the hour. <laughs> yeah. Are we men of the hour? Uh, Dan, yes. uh, no. Hi, Dan. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. <laughs> I spent the day with my grandson. Uh huh. And then I spent the rest of the day with my mother in law. Oh, yeah. Family day, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. Uh, we went to go get our oil changed. And she only wants to go to this one place. And we waited for an hour and a half uh -huh. to get the oil changed. And it was, uh, uh, I was so bored. Oh, I was bored. Well, Terribly bored. Well, you didn't have any, any entertainment? What did you no, do? Were no. You just there at a wall for an they, hour? Oh, we just had to sit in the car. They, they didn't have any magazines there? Inside, but you sit in a car in a line waiting to get your oil changed. What? It's apparently quite popular. Oh. So. You didn't have a, 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 a mobile device to, to browse? No, I butt dialed with my phone and I couldn't, I couldn't call anyone. I couldn't text anyone. I was like imprisoned. You gotta get yeah. a book or a Game Boy. <sighs> Yes. Or a Kindle. Well, it was my mother-in-law's car, so uh -huh. she she keeps it fairly clean, quite immaculate, actually. Did you have to chat with your mother-in-law? Yeah, for two hours. Oh, that's a long chat. Yeah, the trip there, and then a couple trips around. I had to run some errands, uh -huh. get some stuff. Well, but how long were you waiting? Oh, an hour and a half waiting, and then the the oil change itself took maybe twenty minutes. You had to stay in the your most. car, though. You could, you didn't. Oh, you we leave. could get out, you yeah. know, but you had to move the car forward every now and again. Mm -hmm. So you had to get back in. Yeah, that's a long time, though. That that sounds like a bad system. How come they don't have a parking lot and like a wait list or it something? It nearly crushed my soul. Well, yeah. they put numbers. They had these these little green, little cone things mm -hmm. with numbers on them, and they stuck them on the hoods of the car. So yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I it think was you, they, then you could have gotten in the parking lot, and then they could just wait, boring. or they could gather your keys or something. You could everybody could give them their keys, and then <laughs> they move the car forward. Yeah, have a valet do it. And well, that's the, the people who are changing the oil. And yeah. And they get your car, and then they move it forward, and then they change your oil, and then they give your keys back, and, and then you get yep. to the lobby. But I guess they're popular long enough that whatever system they're doing seems to be working. Well, I had to use the bathroom, so I went in and I saw the, the magazines. And there are never any magazines that I like to read. No doctor office, no dental office, no, they don't have no magazines? waiting room that I have been in, I think, in the past 20 years has a magazine that holds much of any interest for me. I, I've seen gadget and science magazines in those places. Home and Garden is about the most interesting one that I've found. Uh, occasionally, New Yorker is interesting. Uh, Not popular mechanics? I've never seen one. I've seen oh, science really? magazines and those places. Do you remember what the waiting room was like? Which one it was? was it doctor? Dentist? I don't, hospital? I don't know. Probably hospitals or something. I don't know yeah. how many waiting rooms I really go into. I think it was probably, it was probably actually a car place or a hospital. Well... I've noticed that the car, the the car establishments, the books, generally revolve around cars. So the magazines are about cars or car-like things. Car and driver, you know, automotive, whatever, you know, all these different car kind of things. And I've no interest in that whatsoever. Uh, popular mechanics, popular science, absolutely. Yeah. I'd be thrilled to tears. Well, I think if I'm in a, if I'm in a waiting room, I would just read. Like I can or something. Read Instead like, of being bored to tears. Read like the chips, you know, on the back of chips where it says their origins and stuff. Oh, like yeah, that'd be interesting reading. Were, 
I mean, but it's just like the advertisements. I'm saying I would read whatever. You know, if they're sitting in that place, you read like people. What about People magazine? Like you don't want to read People magazine? Uh, celebrity that can be interesting. They always have the celebrity gossip magazines. It's not like you need to be following or up on that stuff. You don't even need to know who the people are. Yeah, I have no interest in that. Red <laughs> book. These are artists, you know, right? You, Actors, directors, they're artists for no, the most they're, part. They're, they're, they're random people to you, or maybe and me, to me at least. I see the thing and I'm like, oh, I don't even know who these people are, but it looks like they got divorced. And I can read that and that will make me wait, you know, the, the wait. It will help of, pass the time? It will help pass the time instead of staring at a wall. If, if I am smart. If I know I'm going to be in a waiting room for any length of time, I will bring something yeah, to bring draw. Bring your own thing. I'll oh, bring to something draw, to draw. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'll draw pictures. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not, I probably won't even remember what the magazine is anyway. You know, when you're sitting in that waiting room, and then yeah. when you get out of the waiting room, you've been reading a magazine. Oh. And say, what did you read in that magazine? I would not. I have was any in recollection. a. I was in a doctor's office years ago. I was a teenager, uh-huh. and it kind of got me kind of on the path of science. Uh, it was a Smithsonian magazine, and they were talking about the Fox generational study. And I think I've talked about this on the program before, but I have since read uh, other material regarding this research, and I watched a, a short documentary video on the researchers doing the research, and essentially what they've been doing, I think for 70 years now, they started way back in the 30s doing this, and they started in Russia or Romania, something like that, and. And uh, what they have done is they've, they'll they capture wild foxes and breed them together. I'm not sure how random it is or, or what kind of controls or whatever it is. I think it's probably random, maybe. I'm not sure. But they'll breed them, and, the, and, and those foxes will have puppies. And they will interact with the puppies, and the friendliest of the puppies go over here, and the least friendliest ones go over there. And the friendly ones, they'll in, they'll interbreed these friendly uh, foxes, and of those puppies, they the friendliest ones will go over here, and the least will go over there. Uh, they'll they'll selectively select the most friendly puppies until 40 or 50 or 60 generations later. Uh, these foxes act like dogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, their behaviors are the same as dogs. Uh, you can train them like dogs. Uh, they're less aggressive. Um, they're uh, they wag their tails and they whine and they do all the dog things. And you can teach them tricks and stuff. And their behavior is just like dogs. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so, uh huh. So there have been a lot of theories born of this. Uh, the first is when did human and dogs start interacting with each other? When did they cohabitate? When did they start working together as far as hunting goes or, or uh, protecting the clan from, from bears? <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. And, and there are theories that uh, human beings and dogs have been companions for 40,000 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe longer than that, maybe 100,000 years. They're, they're not really sure. Uh, they have found, I think, two, maybe three, I'm not sure, two that I'm aware of, uh, early humans, uh, like 40,000 years ago, being buried, and a dog was buried with them. Yeah. So so, so that says something. And then uh, there are theories uh, that go where wherever humans are, they always have a, kind of a trash pile, a food pile, like food that they don't want to eat, there's waste, and the dogs would hang out and stay close, and they would get fed. And the friendlier ones... Uh, would interact more closely with human beings and uh, they would in theory or the hypothesis actually is that their puppies would also be friendly or there would be an even more friendly one and after so many generations of of these foxes or wolves or whatever that stay close to humans because we're a fr- food source and we also keep the bears away we have common interest and uh, uh, at some point, dogs and humans were companions. Uh-huh. Yeah, so uh, uh, they've been doing this fox study, and it seems to, to validate. It doesn't necessarily set up the same kind of 
it's kind of a lab. It's not really a real world kind of a test, uh, but uh, I think it's 80 generations and you'll go from a completely wild fox to one that is just uh, like a dog. Dog-like. Yep, yep, yep. It's, right. uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty dog, cool research. fox do and dog, foxes and dogs. Yeah. Yeah, a long time. So yeah, I think uh, we've heard that entire story. I, I, I definitely does remember it sound it. It does. familiar. I want to go back and find that other time when you said it too, and <laughs> see how similar it was. I wonder if I said it this time last year. Intern, we gotta find the intern or future. The, the future generations are viewers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you find the episode, let let us know. How was the week? Dan, how was your week? Uh, see anything on the streets? No. No, just no, no all the regular stuff that uh, we see. Nothing unusual. Traffic, nothing. People. Nothing worth bearing note. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think if I saw any interesting bugs. I I saw something today. I saw a a, a mother who was yelling at her kid. And the kid was agreeing or nodding, and I could tell that the that the kid was not listening. <laughs> and the mother was like, "You you do all this stuff and whatever." And the kid was like, Just "Yeah, uh huh, yeah. yeah, mom, yeah." And then I can I could see it in her, in his eyes, and he was like tired of his mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird, pretty it funny. It was a weird thing to see. Yeah. That's pretty funny. How about you, Carl Street stuff? How's the lettuce? Uh, swell. Has it got I, slaw, I, carrot slaw on it? I, yeah, it's it's uh, the, the uh, purple cabbage or whatever it's called. It's is it all like, purple? Well, no, 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 no. no. The, there's uh, there's shavings of 5%. purple cabbage. Purple slaw. Yeah, 5%. Like and that. it's like, it adds a little bit uh, of a spice. It's got a zing, I, little horseradishy. We, yeah, it seems to be somewhat like an onion in some sense. Horse, horse riders. They, they yeah, they yeah, are, for sure. Yeah, they are related. Yeah, and okay, it's like onions. just that. It's it's definitely um, a little bit of a tinge of of spice, and you know, I guess um, if I really wanted to have a perfect scenario, I would put it on the plate and put like pepper and and dressing and maybe pepper. Uh, yeah, pepper on salad and. What? Yeah, and ground and, pepper or sprinkly pepper? Well, the sprinkly pepper, you know, like ground pepper, sprinkly pepper, you know, it's it's still in the in the shavings and um, shavings, <laughs> like you know, like a little bit of cilantro or parsley or uh, whatever, you, you know. Herbs. Uh, sure. Yeah, but you know, I mean. Um, Sometimes you'd rather eat a herb I, salad. Well, I can be content with anything. Yeah. 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 Well, you, I mean, you're gonna make a lot of that stuff. So. Yeah. I you mean, know, I you don't need those herbs. I can allow my mind. What to, kind of herbs? Well, cilantro. Um. Huh? Yeah. Mint. You put cilantro in your salad? You would do that? That's that's. Yeah. That's kind of, a different thing. I've never seen that. I before. think that's kind of out of control, actually. I'm cilantro salad. Yeah, Carl's out, out of control. control. Yeah, completely out of that? control. Well, maybe not completely. Cilantro is a food ingredient. Like but putting it in your salad, that's yeah. just, that's, 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 uh, that's a place I can't go. Yeah, cilantro <laughs> seems like it's, it's uh, additive to more hearty foods, I think, like, uh... I don't care for the flavor. Oh, you don't like cilantro at I'm all? I'm hearty. Huh? <laughs> no, it tastes like soap to me. Oh, whoa. Yeah, yeah it tastes like soap. Mm. Soap, huh? Wow. Yeah, it has a very, what very... Is, well, what's the, what's, the, what is soap supposed to taste like? Well, so bubbly, tastes like, uh, <laughs> uh, like that flavor, the the flavor of soap or whatever the smell or flavor of soap is, is some kind of supposed to be pleasant smell. And if they base it off of herbs, you know, way back in the day, now it's probably well, taste. I've tasted taste. soap before. Yeah, maybe you get in your, a bit in your mouth and trying to wash your face or something. But I think it's the soap was probably supposed to be based off of something like bar soap. You're like that smells like soap. But are you smelling yeah. the the cleaning qualities? Or the the flavor that the the manufacturers put in there to be like uh, soap, well, soap flavor. Whatever flavor it ends up being. Yeah. Uh, that the flavor, common flavor of soap, like glycerin, is a large component to many of them. Yeah. And uh, that 
you know, maybe it tastes more like glycerin because uh, uh, I make soap every year for Christmas, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did I give you soap? I Christmas? I have some soap, yeah. Okay. Did I give you some? Yeah. Okay. What do you use for the, the flavoring? Is it like oil? Oils. Oil? Essential oils, if I can find them. But there are oils with either artificial or natural uh, natural ones. Like uh, spearmint or peppermint. Uh, that's a natural oil from the plant. Uh, vanilla, coconut, um, almond. Those are natural oils. I'll get those. Um, there's a few others. Cinnamon. And then how do you how does it get hard? Well, it is a solid at room temperature, and you have to heat it up to oh, at least 150 degrees. Ah, and or then so. you and, then and it becomes a liquid, and then you can pour it into molds, and ah. you can put different different hard shapes of other colored soaps that you ah. have cut up and stuff, and you drop them in, and pour the liquid soap on, and let it cool, and it dries and hardens. Okay. That's, how, that's how I get the little white bitty bits in the clear blue or clear red or clear orange. Because mm. I use a clear glycerin and then I add uh, a flavorant, as yeah. I call it. Uh, orange or peach or... Uh, 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 I love uh, grapefruit. Mm. It's one of my favorites. And uh, I found all kinds of different flavors that I put into them. And, and so I'll try and color the soap accordingly. And, and so uh, I'll find like... Um, avocado oil based soap that is not clear it's white uh -huh. um, I will find uh, I found goat's milk based soap the the oil in the milk from goats I uh, that was one kind of soap and milk I found soap, huh? yeah Let's see avocado there's some other one I don't remember uh, but yeah they're 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 solid they're not see-through and so I will add like vanilla yeah. flavor to that or coconut flavor or almond flavor uh, what's another one uh, there's something some of their nut I think I found a small thing uh, some of them. Uh, no no uh, hazelnut or uh, pecan I think I think I think it was pecan yeah hey yeah uh, we're gonna play the dice game we're writing numbers down on our hands between one and six we're trying to visualize the multiverse of the future think about we're we'll rolling some dice here so you're trying to imagine which dice are which one? I bet you guys can't guess what number I picked today. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I can't guess at all. I wonder if you can guess. Here we go. Wrong way. We gotta face it that way. Yeah. We're getting ready to roll, or Carl's getting his number down. Then he goes to do the camera thing. Stereo. Stereo. Here it goes. We got a few messages today too. I am visualizing uh, a three. Yeah, I am. Oh, there you go. Uh, five. Five, and what's the other one? Just five. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. What What did you get, Carl? Did you win? Three? Oh, you're, you're on Team Dan, huh? Or, uh... Yay, Tiffany, Team, Team Dan. Well, Charlie. Team Dan... Team Dan is a loser. Dan, Tiffany, Charlie. <laughs> He's a loser. Loser. Hi, Julian. Hi, Julian. This is Dan. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Hey, Go you coming right back? Yep. Maybe. Uh, nope. All right. Well, it's pretty late right you, now. You're a good friend, Jimmy. Uh... You're a good friend. Um, you're a good friend, and, and I, I, I like talking on the show. Thank you. Um, I'm glad, Dan. That's good. I, I haven't heard from I haven't heard from Frederick. I I I, I haven't heard from Frederick. Oh, uh, yeah. If you know how to get a hold of him, can you uh, can you call him and ask him to call me? I will. Bye. Bye, Dan. We're calling you now, but I think you're probably sleeping. The voicemail box belonging to Dan Dobler is full and can no longer accept new messages at this time to leave a callback number. Press 5 or try your call again Thank later. You. Dan Dobler. Is full and cannot accept new messages at this time. Well, to crap. Callback number. Press 5 or please try again later. Here we go. We're calling uh, Freddy, the producer, now. Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Yep. Dan doesn't know when we call him because if he doesn't answer, then it's like old phones. Dan's still in the paradigm of, of, of analog home phones where you pick it up or you don't. And Does he have a dial? No. I mean, he has a cell phone, but it's just, you know, you pick up right. the phone or you don't. That's like, it's not like there's not none of this like extra like knowledge or information of who's calling you and, and things. You know, look at the, you know, people are like, oh, look, I have a missed call. You know, you, Dan doesn't notice his missed calls. Hey, you've reached Freddie Dobler. Hey, you've reached Freddie Dobler. If you leave me a nice message. I can't come to the phone right now. Oh, I can't come to the phone right now. But if you leave me a nice message, then I'll call you back as soon as I can. Thanks a lot. Hey, you've reached Freddie Dobler. I can't come to the phone right now, but if you leave me a nice message, then I'll try to get back. Hey, you've reached Freddie Dobler. If you can't come to the phone right now, but if you leave me a nice message, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Have you uh, tried calling the show recently? Probably not. I wonder who has. Mr. Gintsu has. Oh, no. Mr. Gintsu has a uh, private... Me or uh, like a personal message on the thing that just beeps so he, it, it goes faster for him so i don't know who has seen or her yeah maybe maybe dan the only person who's noticed it is dan dobler and i don't think dan dobler would even notice huh. yeah, if we are for like dan did you notice the new message machine so i don't think we've had a, a chance to test it out yet when did we when did we record that carl was that um, I'm not sure, but the purple is actually red cabbage. Well, That's what the I mean, label they says. They call it red cabbage, but it's purple. I think Yeah. it's like potato. You know those potatoes? Yep. Yeah. Because it's not red. None of the, um, plants are purple yeah. and green. Yeah. Uh, forbidden rice is black, and it turns other rice purple if you cook It's just very rice. dark purple. I oh, think, yeah. super deep purple. But purple, purple is a... Uh, is a more natural food color than red. Lark, I mean, dark indigo, but not exactly black. Yeah, that the the dark fruits and dark vegetables are have higher amounts of antioxidants in them. Mm. And I expect, I imagine, dark grains as well. What about black beans? Well, the surface certainly, yeah. Uh, but the, it, but the inside of all the beans I'm aware of are kind of. Whitish. I think the inside of black beans are black too, aren't they? No. <gasps> they are. Yeah. They are. Oh yeah, they'd be really good for you then. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. Those black beans. They are. are. Yeah. 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 Just because they're dark. I mean. Yeah. I used to. Yeah. You can get black bean soup. It's pretty dark. There's a lot of darkness in that soup. Yeah. It is it's black bean. It's dark and delicious. And moody. No. Yeah. Very. Moody? It's dark like my mood. Yeah. <laughs> now it's info time. Okay, Carl. You're watching your daily hour with me. It's our hour long hyper live call in television talk show that's filmed in Thurston County seven days a week, 365 days a year, 366 on leap years. Why do you, um, oh, uh, we began on September 19th, 2010. The tapes are a week in advance. So if you're watching this on Channel 22 at 11.30 p.m., this episode taped on the same weekday of the previous week. If you're watching this at 2 a.m., this episode taped on the same day of the month of the previous year. You can also watch any episode of the program on YouTube.com. Anyone can come on the program, especially you. We will lie in the community for content, so give us a call at 360-836-4384 and leave a message. We'll play your message on the next episode and call you back. You make me proud, Carl. I'm proud of you. Thank yeah, you. You do that utterly well. Oh, well, the, the, I know um, someone that goes to my peer supports and he says to me, Carl, you've grown so much. You're grown up. You're a grown ass man. You're taller than I remember you last time. Who said you're oh, grown? Oh, stop. Oh, you got salt. Got yeah, on the floor. I know. I was like, something's weird over there. Yeah, the thing wouldn't stay put. You're growing up. You're a grown. You're a grown person now. What? what you, 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 uh huh. Who, who's telling you you're? you're Are you growing? Your peers. Yeah. Got him. Uh huh. That little fucker. One dead fucking mouse. That's for sure. Yeah. So you got the mouse. Um, the ant looked like they are ready to freaking go at him, but freaking... We got another mouse. I don't know what to do about yeah. that. I don't know, give a fuck. I don't want to eat the mouse. I want to eat that little fucker myself. You're right. <laughs> <eat the> fresh. <laughs> Ew. 
Mmm. Why don't you just wash them up? Delicious. Deep fry them. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I could eat Deep fried. mice. Uh, you'd probably want to home. remove the hair. I have a question for you. Oh, yeah, what's that? So, they made smoking illegal. Uh, okay. It stinks, right? Uh, okay. So now, what's the bitch with electronic cigarettes that they say that you can't smell? <laughs> They say, oh, you can't even smell. The kids are smoking pot or something, or people are smoking pot with it, you can't even smell it. And it's like, what? Now you're bitching that you can't smell it. You cut which, which one I'm cut out there fucking <laughs> Mr. Gonzalez, bitching of the enemies. about fucking bitching Who besides are these people? me? I you mean, know, I'm just saying. You hear about the new people who are against this thing? Like this YouTube likes? These uh, general groups? I don't know who, they, who he's You can't about. use the e-cigarette. You can't smell. In a place where... Oh. You can't smoke. He's talking about e-cigarettes. Uh, yeah. 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 They used to say, yeah, you can use them and you can smoke anywhere with it. You can use it anywhere. No, you, you can't. It, I don't think you should either. It's paper yeah. rising, right? It's paper rising. Yeah. What is your fucking print problem? Well, Mr. Gitsu, it's a fucking paper riser. More rights? Paper. You see not smoke. Yeah, what's. <laughs> Kiss my. Fucking ass. Mr. Ginsu has is an e-cigarette user, maybe? And I'm yeah. wondering if you could tell me why. Oh, and today's Monday. That means... Hey, Dan, I got a question for you. <laughs> is that a sock in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see me? I've got a sock in my pocket, yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I can't see you, so you. I'm happy to hear you. Uh... Yeah, they, I I see people smoking the or vaporizing anyway, Mr. Gensu, the uh, those things on the bus, and I, I kind of think that's not good. I mean, it's going into the air. How could things that are not they're like it's it's not going to go anywhere? But if it's going into the air, how can it not just it's going into there? The the only reason hello oh yep the only reason you can see the smoke is for the benefit of the person smoking it, so he can see smoke, so it feels more like a cigarette. Belonging to Dan oh. Dober. Oh, oops. He's full and cannot accept new messages at this yep. time. To leave a callback number. That's yeah, but they, if they left the uh, ethylene glycol out, or propylene glycol? Yeah. No, no, ethylene. Ethylene glycol, if they left that out, yeah. it wouldn't have a vapor. It'd be clear. Yeah, see, that's ethylene glycol being vaporized into the air. That's uh, that's the same stuff from an e-cigarette. Oh, really? Well, I think yeah, and it it easily it easily oxidizes. That's why it's considered safe. Our bodies break it down easily. Whatever so, it is, uh, you, t t you can't wait till you're your call outside to do to your automatic smoking message system. Two? Cigarettes, cigarettes don't make you a minority, Mr. Ginsu. Neither do does uh, uh, the, you know, the e-cigarettes or. Yeah, it's you don't get any kind of rights. or nobody's you know there's no there's no like discrimination against smoking. People want to be able to... Your emotions make you a minority? Not no, have to breathe something that they don't like. So... And I figure my rights end at the end of my nose. Same with everybody else. Their rights end at the, at the tip of their nose kind of thing. So, uh, uh, like when I uh, have a cigarette outside... I'll step away. If it's nice enough, if it's not raining, I'll walk away from the apartments, especially during the warmer weather because uh, people keep their, their windows open, yeah. right? Cool them down. And so I, I walk away so they don't have my cigarette smoke going into their apartments. So I figure that's, that's a reasonable thing to do, you know? It's reasonable. I think so. Yeah, let's go with this. Here we go, 
Did you have uh, stuff that you wanted to say today that you had thought about in the or anything? Or? Me? Yeah. Oh, uh, do you recall whether or not I've talked about ion engines? Yeah, a lot. I know about the you told. Okay. Me. Hey, uh, uh, five and six. I lost. Everybody lost. Oh man, sadness, deeply satisfying. Uh, I, and Carl Jr. So five and six, the Tiffany. two green ones. You rolled the two green ones. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Black and green. Carl's got a system. Indeed. Is there a new ion engine? They send one oh, molecule oh, it's just at a more, time, and they it's, go faster because it gets added up together. Maximum yeah. time oh. permitted for recording your message. If you are satisfied with your message. Press 1 to listen to your message. Press 1. Press 2 to erase message review. Cigarettes don't make you a minority, Mr. Ginsu. You need to do those, uh, uh, the, you know, the e-cigarettes, or... Yeah, you don't, you don't get any kind of rights, or nobody's, you know, there's no, there's no, like, discrimination against smoking. People want to be able to... Your emotion makes you a minority? Not have to... Have to <laughs> To send your message with normal delivery, press 1. <laughs> to send your message with urgent delivery, press 2. Urgent Thank delivery. You. Your message has been sent. Goodbye. Urgent. I'm not yet. Yeah, I, I always said urgent delivery. I don't know why you would do any other. I don't know what the difference is really, though. Uh, Just make it, it normal. Put, it would put no, that message urgent. in front of the others. Oh, yeah? Well, good. Or there would be notification when he goes to listen to his messages when you say, there's an urgent message for you. Hurry! <laughs> Something like that. Uh, is this week the week. last, the death week? Uh, death week is over. This yeah, is spaghetti week, the actually. The commercial. Oh, yeah, kind of. We're here with Robin. Robin? Uh, I don't, for seeing the apocalypse. What? So if I don't remember if you this, uh, this is like the news though if you uh, if you want to know how to avoid the apocalypse or what to do if there's an apocalypse, <laughs> uh, we'll, yeah, I know her. Tonight. Oh, you do? Yeah. At eleven thirty. Yeah, she's friend. Yeah. Is that? Oh, uh, is she your friend? I have no That's from last year, right? Yeah, from last year. Also at two a.m. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Robin. Yeah. Is, uh, she lives down the street. She uh, she hosts bands where she lives, and they'll come oh, and play. Oh, I remember. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, Robin. Yeah, and, and she she's had, really she nice. She had a kid too and stuff, and yeah. she was doing. I remember now. All right, good. Yeah, that was freaky for a minute. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I must not remember a lot of things, but sometimes you see yourself. And you're like, oh, I just, uh, yeah, it's like I know her. Did that happen to me? Hello, darling. In reality. All right. Well, how about those? Uh, <laughs> well, ion engines. I got you. Oh, just that uh, <laughs> under good conditions, I hadn't found uh, a good source. Yes, yeah. I do. He, he brought a hippo. He brought a hippo. I, I wanted to remind Dan about So his. when the socks are talking, you know. Oh, yeah. So if I make it a group effort, yeah. then it's a whole lot oh, easier. What are, we, what are we getting into here? <laughs> well, okay. Okay, last time, last Monday, I was talking in falsetto. I'm like, yay, whatever. And Mr. Ginsu gave me crap. Uh-huh. And he said, if you're going to talk like that, it should be with a sock puppet. Or with a puppet or something. So, uh, <laughs> here she is. Meet Sockina. Hello, Hi. darling. Hello. Oh my God. Hello, you hippie. <laughs> hey, so wait a minute. Right now. You are not a sock puppet. What the hell? Yeah, that's not even a I belong in the zoo. <laughs> it's uh, a stuffed toy. Oh, no. It's the a zoo is a... If the it's zoo is a playpen, yeah. But I'm uh, a sock puppet. But uh, okay. so I can love you, can I not? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to hurt Kenny with our, with our sock puppetry. It, I, I, that, that groaning indicates some discomfort, and so I'll respect that and not drive you crazy with him. Uh, this, this is one of the sock puppets that I did my mental health news hour on. Uh, Carl is into it. The, I can... Uh, oh, Sorry. I, I watched what? that show. You know, you know, Dan. I, you knew this already, but I watched yeah. you for years on TV before I ever saw you, and I was like, "That that guy's from T. That's the guy from TV." Because I watched Public Access. I don't know how many other little kids. Do you remember did. the first time you saw me? I mean, like in person. Uh, I don't know. I went to probably, probably not, not specifically. Dance only dance, maybe. Maybe I mean probably just at the TV station, but I definitely saw you on TV a lot, and then you know you go over there to the TV place. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Well, you know. TV. 
I'm friends with Freddy, and so yeah, yeah. No, but way before before that, even in the in the '90s, I think I was watching you on TV. Wow. Was that were you on TV in the '90s? Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. I think I was watching you when I was a young kid, uh, preteen. I was like, hey, look at this. Um, guy. actually, no. You it was 2000. Oh, maybe I watched. 2000. Uh, uh, summer, profit? I think it was summer 2000, started doing shows. And I started doing them with Prophet Atlantis, and pretty soon I was doing them with uh, my two daughters. And one daughter would play one sock puppet. They were really high-pitched. You may have remembered them. And they were way louder than me, both of them. And so I, uh, after doing a show with them, I had to... Uh, uh, I realized I had to talk louder or get the mic in front of me more because you couldn't hear me over them when they were talking. You uh, couldn't hear me at all. And the technology at the time wasn't something where I could bump up the left channel or the right channel, whatever channel I was on. Yeah. So, that smoke is pretty wild. It's just this... Pro purple this, go go all uh, ethylene, isopropylene. Ethylene glycol. I isopropyl... Gleam. Yeah. Or maybe it is purple. What's this? What's the Get science? them mixed up. What's the okay, science? well, I was going to talk about the Ion Engine, and, and there, uh, I keep encountering news articles about this. Uh, NASA picking three different companies they gave money to, they, grant, they gave grants to, or gifts, or whatever, for three different companies to build three different kinds of Ion Engines. Uh-huh. So... Uh, and the Vasimir was one of them, and they all use essentially the same kind of technology to shoot stuff out. And um, uh, it's conceivable, uh, yeah. In 40 days, I think uh, one article that looked pretty, pretty solid. Uh, 40 days to Mars with the, ion engines. They're going they're 40 days from yeah. Earth Mars. to Mars in 40 days. Yep. That's fast. Yeah, it is. That's super fast. Because it just goes faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And Whoa. it might only go like a millimeter faster a second, or it might yeah. be a millimeter a minute. Yeah, when if, I was at TCTV, you showed me that post. That's fast. I believe in, on Facebook. Well, and well, I did. You, you were doing some sort of uh, arth 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 arithmetic yeah. calculation, and I was just like, yeah. oh, man, I just kind of... You know, uh, one second, well, you know, one faster per second faster. Okay, so like, so uh, let's say that the, the our little spaceship is headed towards Mars, and it can accelerate one millimeter per minute. Uh, okay. So every minute, it's going a millimeter faster. It would take 16 hours to go a meter per second, or a meter, yeah, yeah, a meter per second faster. Uh, okay. So a meter a second is uh, walking. That's that's how fast you walk. So so uh, uh, another sixteen hours, another meter per second faster. Another sixteen hours, another meter per second faster. Yeah. Another sixteen hours, and so uh, within a week you're going. Oh, what did I figure? Um, I think fast, ten days. Huh? I think ten days you're going. Uh, no. No, I forget what the, what the number was, but within a week you're you're going uh, you're going faster than a jet, uh, okay. and another week you're you've uh, uh, doubled that speed. I think even more, but it's wow. a steady Damn. rate, yeah, something like that. So at the halfway point, you turn around. So so what they're doing is uh, the next group of probes that they sent out after today, essentially. Uh, we'll have these new upgraded Generation 2 ion engines from these different companies that build them. And they're going to test them out with probes. Uh, uh -huh. Going here, going there, doing stuff. Uh, they're going to send... Uh, NASA awarded uh, this one company to build a ship using one of these uh, ion engines to go to an asteroid and pick a boulder up off the asteroid and bring it back to the midpoint between the Earth and the Moon and then send people out to that to go get samples from it. So literally b bring a piece of the asteroid to us and then we go at a relatively close distance between the Earth and the Moon, it's very stable, and uh, get core samples, 
uh, chip at the rocks, you know, drill into it, maybe bring it back, put it in lower Earth orbit where we can study it, you know, at the space station, park it near the space station, or in front of the space station, so that, you know, debris coming at the space station is like a big block, it's a big blockade. But this thing would probably be not be much bigger than a washing machine. You know, it's relatively small. Mm -hmm. But they've seen on all kinds of asteroids, boulders and chunks of, of rock from uh, old collisions and stuff that has landed gently on it. Because the, the gravity on these uh, asteroids are usually pretty weak. And so it would just kind of slowly float and not real hard. It wouldn't blow up. Oh, that's cool. Look at that smoke. Whoa. Here, let's do this. That's cool. Watch this. What is it? Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. What is that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Three dice at once. Three that's, at once. Here we go. That's it's amazing. The, Can we do that? Game. Is that going to be possible? I yes. Oh my gosh. Right I now, believe it's possible. We have no points, so it's uh, anybody's game right now. Well, you guys have the same number. I think I'm going to get a three. I've decided I'm getting a three. Yeah, I've decided this. When, I'm trying to think of when you use use your puppet, you're supposed to you're supposed to be do like when you want to do your your yay thing. But I don't remember even what, oh, in, under what context. Did, oh, you look at that! You got Three? one. You did it. Yeah. Really, Carl Jr. Yay. Took it big time. Carl Jr. There you are. That Carl your Jr. Son. Carl's son. Carl Jr. There he is. Okay, so when I say man. the yay thing in, in the in the falsetto, then then I have the sock puppet do that. Yeah, you, well, that, okay. why why would you say that? I don't remember like what's the what in, the, in what context you say that. We're trying to I'm trying to create a false context so you can do do the, the thing for the pr purpose that it's supposed to be happening. But what, hello, darling. No, not like that. That's not what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what are you saying for no reason? Why why do you even say that? The no? yay. Yeah. Oh, cause. Comedy. I won. I won. No. Won the dice roll. Yay! Oh, there you go. There you oh, go. there that, you go. That, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Sure. Yeah. See, I, I, and if I have to yay anything else, if I'm particularly pleased about another thing and I feel a yay coming on, then it's yay. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the, the good way to go about it if you want to. All right. I think, uh, Carl, every time you want to make a pun or something, then you can pull out your little hippo there. And then, <laughs> you know, maybe it's it's your time. It's, it's your a hippo. hungry hippo. No, I uh, don't know. That's not really a pun. No, 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 don't do any puns anyway. I don't want to encourage you to do puns, but if you, you know, feel the, the dark urge. <laughs> the dark you. urge. Yeah. Yes, the yeah. dark urge for have, a pun. If you have the, the, yeah, if the dark urge falls upon you. you yeah, yeah. Just uh, well, What did you say about black beans? That they were black and dark? Dark and delicious. Dark and delicious. So, what about yeah. the, what about black no, well, and nutritious? Maybe maybe the think of dark pun? puns are dark and delicious. Dark, uh, no. dark. You have to say it in a fake accent. I think it's more impressive. Well, I'm more impressed that way. Dark and delicious. <laughs> I'm impressed by fake accents. I'm the opposite of impressed. <laughs> Uh, are you are you depressed? Uh, depressed supposed by to, the fake uh, accents? Yeah, maybe a little bit. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I don't boy. I don't wish to cause you depression. Is that what the opposite impress? I guess. No, yeah. it's it's not. Not. Uh, well, well, if you're impressed means you really like something, and the opposite would be not liking something. Yeah, well, unim unim dislike. Uh, unimpressed or just you know one. Anti impressed? Impressed? No, Anti -impressed? I think unimpressed is a word. I am unimpressed. unimpressed. I think it's a. I think you can say that. That's a that's a word people say, right? Or not? As you say, I am not impressed. Yeah, I, that would work. That I think that carries. Uh, I think that carries no, the but, uh, but the not, feeling I'm better. Just not not impressed though. I, it's not just like zero. It's beyond that. So yeah, it's negative. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah it's anti. There's impressed. Because you got not impressed. But then I'm something else. That's a little bit farther into being from. If you're going in the direction from impressed to not impressed, then I'm farther down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Step. Well, I don't know. I mean, it could be yeah, like impressed. impressed is plus five, and zero is feeling nothing, and I'm, I'm minus little, five would I'm be something like that. I'm, I'm extremely unimpressed. We maybe. Well, uh, level think, five I think, unimpressed. Like, I think like unimpressed is like maybe like point five, and extremely unimpressed is like you know point like. What about not impressed, disimpressed? You know, not impressed at all. We have maybe I'm matter, and we have anti matter. What do you? What? Disimpressed? We have matter and we have antimatter. I don't know what you're talking about, Carl. Well, no, it's you know you can't have anti or positive or negative. Whoa! Ah! 
Oh, you, you killed your little hippo yes. there. You're My done. hungry Don't hippo yeah. is going through the grave. Oh, good. Or I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. Dad. Oh, okay. So, what do you guys know about the the Large Hadron Collider? The it's a big ring in Texas. Yes. No. It's in Europe. France. Oh, it's not in Texas. France. I thought it was Switzerland. Okay. It, Maybe. It, 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 they're sure. trying to find anti anti matter. Eastern France. Yeah, it's a big ring underground. Uh, and they Western Switzerland. Positrons. Oh, oh, all kinds ah. of stuff. Uh, all kinds of stuff. They can they can take any any atom and spin it around the ring and get it going and going and it ionizes and so they're only only the nucleuses of the atoms are what hit together and they like smash together. <clears throat> and one is going in this direction at near the speed of light and another one is going in the opposite direction at near the speed of light and then they redirect them and they smash each other at near the speed of light wow yeah. bluey yeah and if the closer to the speed of light that they can get them the more energy is bound up in these little atoms uh, according to relatively relativity uh, the more speed you add the more mass and energy it it, it has in it it's as if it has more mass, like it's growing in mass the faster, the closer to the speed of light you get it. And it takes more and more and more energy the closer you get it to the speed of light. And so, so these little atoms are super, they are acting as if they are giant particles hitting each other. And all kinds of other subatomic particles go flying off in every direction. And they have tons and tons of these grids that track the direction and the energy and the momentum, the speed of all these little subparticles, all kinds of stuff. And most of those, or almost all of those, exist only for a trillionth of a second and then they evaporate. Or they break down into other more familiar particles as they lose more and more energy as they as they bounce around and stuff. And this is huge. This This is a giant... It's like underground, and it's like uh, ten stories. It's the room where the where the collider is, right where the the stuff meets. Uh, it's like ten stories tall, and uh, 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 it's huge. It's a huge facility. Uh huh. And uh, they ride bikes around the tunnel, around the ring, <laughs> for repairs and checks and and uh, upgrades and this sort of thing. So recently, uh, they shut the Large Hadron Collector collider down and they increase the cryogenic magnets right uh, -huh. uh they've got uh the uh, 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 uh oh how can i forget this uh there are magnets that carry current without resistance um uh super super magnets or whatever superconductors superconductors wow. thank you wow. yeah so the whole ring is lined with superconductive magnets that Whoa. that helps it go around so fast and swing around so fast and so without any resistance. Yeah, and they doubled yeah zero resistance and they've doubled the energy output that they is can apply to these little particles. Yeah, it's a vacuum chamber, no air. Wow, it's so big too. Mm, yeah, it's a huge ring. It doesn't collapse, huh? That's crazy. It's yeah, well, they're strong. they're super steel pipes. Oh wow! Super steel, uh, super steel fittings that don't allow air to to leak in at all. So they're not really sure. I haven't read anything that they are predicting to find. Like they were looking for the Higgs boson particle, and this is a crazy huge particle that only existed for a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. Uh, but it it matched the energy level and the uh, the uh, it lasted for a particular time, and it had. Uh, the energy level that they were predicting. They predicted that one particle, when they smashed stuff together, one particle would have this level of energy and it would live for this long and it would have this kind of momentum. And uh, it showed up when they had, when the energy for the particle accelerator was high enough. So now they've doubled it. So they expect to find lots of these little Higgs boson uh, little, little creatures. Wow. Yeah. And the part of the, part of it, what's really interesting is these atom smashers um, 
are the superphysics, and they, by smashing these particles together, they are creating conditions very, very close to the the early, early, early universe, mm -hmm. where the pressure and the energy level that was condensed in in this spot uh, uh, was about the same. So. You know, a few seconds after the Big Bang, uh, Higgs boson particles existed in uh, a big fluid or something. And as the space expanded, as it inflated at a super fast pace, uh, all these particles lost energy and they eventually turned into quarks and leptons and muons and baryons and is then the those clumped together and made atoms and electrons and is, is the expansion photons. happening at the speed of light or is it faster than that i don't think space the the expansion of the universe what they what they believe is that we would just go into a black hole if space didn't expand at an inflated rate, there's so much material, we would all just get sucked back in and we go into a black hole. Oh, there's so crazy. much stuff, it's so dense, uh, but it's uh, expanding. So that's that's what they figured. So, <clears throat> And uh, people believe that uh, these particles hitting together at such energies are what they think the inside of a black hole is like, that it's so dense and the energy is so high that conditions are ripe for Higgs boson particles living inside these these black holes. So, 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 uh, in a way, we're doing we're hitting elementary particles together to get a better understanding of what the universe uh, was like or how it behaves under extreme conditions. Mm. So it's just kind of interesting that you take this underground <laughs> ring and, <laughs> and uh, have atoms hit into each other and it tells you more about our universe and suns and stars and are stuff like that. particles and atoms, do they function like dust itself and, and they can be sucked into the black hole as well? The particles? Yeah. Sure. Everything gets sucked into that, except for neutrinos. Uh, neutrinos act like light. They propagate in the sp at the speed of light. And there are like th three or four of them. And they don't interact much at all with matter. Uh, they're influenced by gravity, but they don't interact. And uh, they just go right straight th through the Earth. And a billion of them could be passing through us right now. And one might... Uh, interact weakly <laughs> with uh, an atom in our body, but they'll pass through the Earth and not interact uh, with it, with any of the, any of them. And the sun gives them off. And uh, whenever there's a supernova, uh, a burst is sent out. So, and they have those as far underground as they can get because they want as few particles or fields to interact with the detectors. So, yeah. And yeah. harm the experiment somehow. Yeah, well, they'd mess it up. They'd introduce uh, static, essentially. And yeah. you want as little static as possible. Yeah, you don't want that variable to enter in an uh, experiment. Yeah. yeah. You, you want to be able to create it and recreate it and recreate it and say, oh, then this is fact. You get this and that from when this happens. Well, yeah. Yeah. What, what day is Arts Walk, Dan? Arts Walk is April 24th and 25th. It's on Arbor Day. Is it really? Interesting. So I guess and we can plant trees by painting. Or I paint will trees. plant my foot on the ground. There you go. And stand boldly in the face of some wind, probably. Yeah. 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 I think we're going to be having a spot at that thing, right? At your at your spot. Yeah. And Carl has his his art up there too, right? For sure. And you're going to we're going to do uh, have a program. That's right. Thing. I talked to Freddie about that and and uh you there there were some questions about the uh making it happen that I had for it, but uh yeah. 
Yeah, there's going to be one person. Yeah, there's going to be one person at a uh, that uh, has jewelry, uh-huh. and she's going to have a little table. So I'm not sure where we're going to stick the installation. Ah. But we'll try and put it. Uh, if I can fit it up front in the front corner, uh, that'd be cool because there's that chair there. But uh, we can talk more later about it uh, about the details. Dan. If you're watching this on TV, if you watch Dan on TV, you can meet him in person at, at his art gallery out yeah. during Arts Walk, and I think we'll be there some of the time too. So yeah, maybe, it'll be, maybe one or two other people. We'll be doing it's like a it's like a, a meet and greet. Oh yeah. For TV people. Yeah. Just yeah, so so it's at the Urban Medicinal, which is on Legion, towards the lake, not the Urban Onion. People get the two confused for some reason. It's the Urban so Medicinal. So for it's, clarification, what is the exact address? I don't remember. I think it's the one twenty. Uh, I can see how they, people can get the Urban Medicinal and the Urban Onion mixed yeah, up yeah. a little bit. They're, they're precisely in opposite directions. They have, they have the same name, or they have well, yeah, a word. I think true. it's the word that is... is urban. It's the yeah. word Urban that is... Confusing people. Well, what I found that I just need to uh, uh, be really clear yeah. about, you know, the urban medicinal as opposed to the urban. The urban. urban. Yeah, you go to Legion, call? you go, uh, yeah, it's Legion and water, I think. Yeah, I'm looking it's at right it on the corner. Right now. Oh, you, yeah. don't need to, you don't need to look at it. It's a, it uh, what, you know what's really uh, funny? It's fine. I don't know. Tell me if this. We don't need to you, know the address. What? Tell me if you. Uh, yeah, yeah, we don't. Um, tell me what if you think this is ironic. That uh, I the, oh. okay, I think Whoa. it is. I think I think it is uh, irony uh, in a One twenty one. I think that's it. Okay, yeah, that sounds right. Okay, so so uh, the Urban Medicinal is a dispensary. The front lobby is where my art is, and uh-huh. you can go in there to see it. But it's a dispensary that was for years uh, the State Patrol office. Yeah, that's so that's kind of ironic a little bit. Yeah, I was thinking so. It feels ironic. It's because it's like State Patrol will bust you for pot, but, but now, now that pot's legal, we got a shop there <laughs> where, where they used to yeah. process the uh, uh, people they stop. Pardon? No, uh, I don't know. I thought I Carl's what? pulling that dark pun Who? hippo there. I didn't. Well, you gotta, I don't know. What? Uh, yeah, that's Who? that's your, oh. that's your pun hippo. Yeah, hey, look at that. It's the end of the show. No, it's just a hippo. It's a what? It's it's. Is uh, it the end of the show? It's, it's the end of the show. Oh crap! Senior. That went fast. We made it through Carl's another episode of the program of lo- losing consciousness or dying. Hello, my name is Carl Senior. Forty <laughs> days to Mars. <laughs> the Carl Senior. Forty <laughs> days to Mars. <laughs> Carl, I'm your father. No, you are not, Luke. Uh, Carl's father. Carl. Oh Carl boy. Senior, so three if, generations. If you could take a probe and accelerate it <laughs> at one millimeter a second okay it would take uh i think it's 16 minutes and it would be going a meter per second faster thanks dan dobler which is a yard Mr. for those Jim of you Duke, that don't Freddy? know i can't wrap my head around uh, we that we didn't make any phone calls today which is well five, didn't we try calling uh yeah we called we tried calling dan but didn't we try calling mr Ginsu? nobody picked up successfully get it. Uh, yeah, one thousand six hundred. Nobody picked up. So. Oh, I like that. That's a uh, that's one of those one six six one. One of those uh, eleven thirty p.m. and two a.m. YDHWM.com. Uh, palindrome. It's a palindrome. Palindrome. Yeah. Three six zero three six four three eight four. Leave me alone. Like level is par- palindrome. Level, yeah. Level. Yeah, man. Level is Matt, yeah. Max, Paul, Quinton, Roger, Scott, Zuger, Aviva. UFO, FBI. Her, her name is palindrome. TCTV, Crystal Ball, LaBebe, Jordan E, Thurston County, Washington State, USA. Thank you. Viewers only. Hell yeah. yeah, dog. Woof, woof. The ball. <laughs> Coming up on the next episode of the program. Your daily hour with me. Yeah. Hey, it's a commercial. Yeah. Um, Mr. Ginsu got kind of accusatory, and John Webster tries to talk on the phone and watch baseball at the same time. Mr. Ginsu left, like, a lot of messages, like 10. And he apparently didn't uh, go to bed. He called at 9 o'clock in the morning. We talked to McDonald's. Yeah. Carl's here. Yeah. 
11.30 p.m. and 2 a.m. 360-836-4384. Leave us alone, though, because we're dead. I'm over it. (laughs) 